And of course, uh, the biggest percentage of Africans don't understand why they pay taxes at all. You find yourself paying taxes at the end of every month or literally every time you purchase something. It's quite huge uh, in, of course, countries like Rwanda or uh, in the East African region where we are right now. First and foremost, do we understand why we pay taxes? I would say that the, big, the bigger part of the population doesn't understand mm. why they pay taxes. Reason being that the tax authorities do not take an extra mile of sensitizing the population, their role in taxation. An example, take an example of the businessmen. Mm. The businessmen will tell you that they are the ones paying taxes. But in the actual sense... Are they actually the ones paying taxes? No. The person paying the taxes is the final consumer. All right. If we take a scenario, if I'm importing goods from China, when I reach at any customs, everything that is taxed on me, it is inclusive on the price, and I end up giving it to the final consumer, giving me back my money as the businessman. Mm -hmm. So who suffers the pinch? The person who suffers the pinch is the final consumer, someone who doesn't know anything about taxes, who doesn't know that he or she must keep the government accountable in making the taxes they collect to put them to the good use. Mm. There is a lot of uh, taxes that we've heard of, of course, the corporate taxes, we've heard of excise duty, we've had a lot of them. Kindly, just give me a step uh, by step understanding of this. Not a very long one, but one that I can actually drive on. I'll give you a simple scenario. Mm. We talk about like VAT. Mm. Value added tax. Value added tax. The value added tax, as the business person, the government gives you the role of helping it or helping her to collect. Are you becoming that a tax collector now? Yes, <laughs> that is your role as a businessman okay. or as a businesswoman, to help the government collect that tax mm. from the population. That is why that any VAT or any value added tax that you pay, you keep the figure. When you collect another one from a certain purchase that you're making, mm. you have to less what you paid mm. and then you deliver the difference. If the difference is on you to pay, you pay. If the difference is that you are supposed to claim, then you have to file the claim to the tax authority and you're given a refund. This is for the business. So basically, you mentioned something rather very interesting. Uh, we pay about 18% in uh, VAT yes. here in Rwanda. If it all comes back to the final consumer, let's say I'm buying a laptop from uh, an electronic store and the 18% is added onto the money I'm supposed to pay, yes. and it is the business that goes to claim that money, when does it come back to the person that actually paid the tax? The person that pays the tax can does only benefit if he or she is registered as a taxpayer who can claim mm. the taxes that he pays. Ideally, for you to understand the tax properly, it is that the government borrows money from you, the population, mm. to use it for a certain period of time. You can go and claim it back if you're, if you're registered. If you're not registered, you can't claim it back. Okay. So basically what you mean is that if I bought something and I had a TIN number, they could actually register the taxes on, on me. On you. And I can you get can tax claim refunds at the end of the year. At the end of the year. Okay. So it, I think it this, is, is, this is rather interesting. But uh, of course, uh, we still don't necessarily understand if I'm a business, what kind of tax am I paying? If I'm an individual, what kind of tax am I paying? If I'm bringing goods from outside Rwanda or from outside the ESC, what kind of taxes do I have to pay? Could you just give me an outlook onto this? Uh, I would say that uh, for someone importing goods mm. outside Rwanda, mm. you, pay, you pay the import duty, you mm -hmm. pay VAT, there mm -hmm. is withholding tax, then there are 15% of, uh, of the withholding tax. Withholding tax is 5%. And Ooh. it change, it varies depending on how you have got how, have, how you have applied with the, tax, with the different tax authorities, depending mm. on the government, it can go to 3% or 
or it can remain at 5% or even it can go to zero. All right. Then another thing that we pay, there is another one that was included by the, the East African community that infrastructure development tax. It is like 1.5%. So all those are taxes that we pay. Mm. Then again, for, for someone who, like if we, if we talk about, let me say, like CIT, mm. which is like the corporate income tax, mm. it is usually 30%. And this is the 30% on the profit, the net profit that you've made, 30%. If you're making losses, the government doesn't need your contribution of 30%. And to, and to your surprise is that you're even allowed, mm. when you're making losses in the first year, the second year, the third year, up to like the fifth year. But you year. have to file that you're making You have losses. to file it. The government wants you to be more open mm. to her, mm -hmm. to understand how you're performing. Because oh. he, she is a stakeholder mm. in your business. Mm. When you make profits, she will take 30% of that profit. You know you keep profit. on saying she and her, you confuse me, but I'll always leave it right there. And then move on quickly to one last question that is rather, uh, we can't let you go without talking about it. Uh, we just saw the other day, July 1st, Uganda initiated, I think, 0 0.05 uh, cents, uh, dollars per day uh, on uh, over the top, uh, the, kind of the WhatsApps and uh, Facebook and all of this. Rwanda uh, had a new tax law in about uh, January, if not February, where they introduced a new corporate tax, of course. And uh, we've seen Kenya also, just recently when they were reading their budget, they had new taxes put in place, all of which are seeking to see how they can actually make more money easily to finance the projects that they have, infrastructure projects. And, uh, you know, budget deficits, as of right now, we're still looking at Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, all running on budget, big, big budget deficits. Tell me, is this the best way to do it or is it actually going to stifle the economy from your point of view? From my point of you don't view, have to be politically specifically correct. to our, our zero on uh, the Ugandan <laughs> mobile money tax. <laughs> okay. the, the tax of mobile money and social, social media tax. All right. You realize that this one will not only create more, more money to mm. the government, mm. but it will affect the population. But the government but is looking at $4.2 billion just from over-the-top services. You're looking at what is coming in, but you're really not looking at what you're blocking. Okay. There is what comes in that ends up contributing to the general growth. Mm. And when you block it by just a mere small percentage, mm -hmm. Others will not perform. Basically, what you're saying is that Uganda is trying to get $500 from one person instead of getting uh, $100 from five people. From five people. Okay. I will take, take, take a scenario. I load my phone. It is not only affecting the, the social media. Mm. Before you use your phone, internet on your phone, mm. you have to pay what is called OTT. All right. And when you're paying that OTT, mm. it means that even when you're not going to use the social media, you mm. still be affected by that tax. Okay. An example, if I, have, if I did not have the OTT mm -hmm. tax on my phone mm. and I need to complete a transaction in China mm. that maybe would generate millions of money to the economy, I will be delayed. And if someone in China is going to delay by five minutes as I'm looking for someone mm. to load for me that money and I, and I be able to transact, I will have failed. Because time is money, and as long as we don't save time in the process of anything that delays a transaction, mm. it really affects the economy right. and affects the business. Brand